Hey y'all, back with another video. What I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start adding in some tips and tricks videos in addition to the styling videos that I usually do. So what I'm asking you guys to do is leave comments down below. Let me know any issues that you're having, any things you want me to specifically address, you know, any kind of videos that you think would be good and would be helpful. Let me know and I'll incorporate all those things and create new tips and tricks videos for you guys. So today what I'm going to talk about is how to get the perfect mold. And without further ado, let's get into it. And I also want to tell you guys that I am going to put together a list and just put a screenshot of the list up at the end of the video. So stay tuned. And then if you'd like, you can just pause the video, screenshot that, and you'll have the list of things that I'm going over instead of having to, you know, go back or what did she say or what was that? So I hope that makes things easier for you guys. Okay. Tip number one, rinse, rinse, rinse. You want to make sure that you rinse any product out of your hair, shampoos, cleansing products and especially conditioners, they have a tendency to coat the hair. And you wanna rinse all of that out because when you apply your foam and get ready to wrap your hair, you want the foam directly on your strands of hair so that it can do its job and do whatever it is it's designed to do. If there is a thin layer coating your hair, then think about it. The foam is actually sitting on top of that thin layer as opposed to actually touching your hair. So that's the first tip. All right, tip number two, you want to use a wide tooth comb when your hair is wet to just direct it before you actually add foam, take a small tooth comb and wrap your hair. Why you want to do this is because everybody knows your hair is more susceptible to damage and breakage when it's wet. So if you're using a wide tooth comb and you're already getting that hair in the right direction, it's much less stress on your hair strands and it is easier in the end for you to get your wrap to be exactly the way you want it to be. So use that wide tooth comb first, get your hair going, then you go back in and you perfect everything. All right, number three, you wanna add a small layer of foam on your hair before you actually go in and comb the hair into the wrap and shape your edges and all that good stuff because what this will allow you to do is to have more control and manageability with your hair when it's wet and you have that foam on it. You won't be fighting with your hair to try to get it to go in the direction that you want it to go in. And also, this will give you an opportunity to see whether or not you need to add more foam. If you need more foam at the root, you can see it. If you need more foam on your ends, you'll be able to see that. So after you've taken that wide tooth comb, and combed your hair in the direction you're gonna wrap it, then you take your thin layer of foam, put it right on top of the hair, check everything out, see if you need more foam, less foam, see if you need to add a little more water. This will all help in the end for you to get that perfect mold. All right guys, tip number four. This one I've said it in tutorials before, I know. Um, so maybe you've caught it, maybe you haven't, but you always wanna make sure you place your small tooth comb at the root of your hair. So you're ready to now actually mold the hair shape it like you want it to be shaped. Put the teeth of the comb on the root of your hair and keep them there as you make each comb stroke. You wanna to be touching the root of your hair. What this does is it keeps each layer of your hair straight. You have a layer of hair that's on top. You know, you have layers of hair underneath that. And then you have a layer of hair that's right at your root. Your hair is dense. You know that you can take your hair and put it in a ponytail and just graze over the top and have hair underneath that that's still not combed out fully and that's still tangled. So to prevent that, you wanna keep the teeth on your roots as you are shaping and molding your hair once you've added your foam to it. This will ensure that your mold is sleek and that you get the outcome that you want, the specific outcome that you're going for. I think I've shown you guys this before also, but I wanna talk about it um, individually here. When you are combing your hair, into the mold with your small tooth comb. You have the teeth of the comb at the root. Every time you make a stroke, you wanna follow that up with your hand and smooth it. The reason you do this is because like you know, combs have teeth and each one of those teeth is going to make a mark in your hair. So you have these tiny, tiny teeth marks and they separate the hair. So to avoid your final mold being separated and spacey and to make sure everything is cohesive, you wanna follow each stroke with your fingers, either your flat fingertips this way, or you can do it this way, or you can take one finger and do it. 
however you choose to do it and whatever is easiest for you just make sure you follow up each comb stroke with a stroke of your fingers that is going to make everything smooth you want your mold to end up looking like um kind of like a hard helmet all together all one piece so you can see the difference when you follow that stroke with your finger and when you don't all right, I think we are on tip number five. What you wanna do is check your mold. After you have everything done, you've combed everything, you've used your hands to smooth each one of your comb strokes out, take a moment before you actually put your, uh, take a moment before you actually put your um, wrapping paper on and make sure that this side is smooth, this side is smooth, the top is smooth. Make sure everything is cohesive and everything blends together. You know, sometimes you may mold your hair with this going back and then you may pull your edges down this way. There's a space right here where those two different pieces of hair are gonna separate. You don't want that. So at the end of your mold, before you actually sit under the dryer and tie your hair down, you wanna go back and correct any of that. If there's, you know, any separation there, you just wanna make sure that it's smooth. Like for instance here, this part of my hair is going this way, this part of my hair is going this way. So once I molded this, I went back with my finger and the comb and just made sure those two pieces came down like this seamlessly. You don't want big hunks of separation because in the end, you're gonna have to fight with that hair to get it to go in the direction that you want it to go in. You don't wanna be forced to use excessive amounts of heat. If you wanna wear flat styles or if you wanna wear a no heat style, it is really, really essential that you get that mold perfect and that everything is smooth together okay now you're ready to place your wrap strips what you want to do is you want to place your wrap strip first in the part of your head in the back that is the widest and you want to place that wrap strip flat there first then you can pull this side pull this side tie it or you can pull this side and um, you know kind of paste it to your head and pull this side and paste it to your head the reason you want to start in the back is because that's the part of your hair that's the most dense and it's a wide section of your head. So for instance, here your hair is less dense, you have fewer hair. So if you started to place your wrap strip here and then you tug and pull on it to come around, that is gonna shift. And even if it shifts just a little bit, it's more likely to mess up an area of your hair where it's less dense and there's fewer strands. You place that wrap strip here and then you pull it this way to tie it even if that little shift occurs in the back, because there's so much hair and because the hair is so dense, you're likely only going to shift the top layer of hair, if any hair at all. That is easy to fix and that's not a major problem. But if you mess up the sections of your hair that are less dense and you have fewer strands, you're going to be able to see that separation. And because there's less hair there, it's even harder to fix that after your mold is dry. So when you place your wrap strips, Place them carefully and start in the back of your head at the widest section of your head. All right, guys, I forget what number we're on. I think six, <laughs> but you've heard this over and over and over again. The stylists have told you this. I've said it in videos. You know it's the truth. You still don't want to do it. You have to let that shit dry. Sit under the dryer for the right amount of time. Make sure that your mold is dry. Why? Because wet hair frizzes. You don't want a frizzy mold and you don't want a frizzy style. You want a sleek mold that's gonna allow you the versatility during the week to do whatever it is you wanna do with your hair. Okay guys, that's it. I hope this helps. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and put up a recap list of all the points that I covered. As always, thank you guys for supporting, subscribing, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will get back to you guys and tell me whether or not you like this video again. So until next time guys, bye.